Yes, indeed. Happy Friday, everybody. Almost the weekend. More almost the weekend for me because it's uh, only an hour or so left in my day. It always makes these uh, easier for me. Uh, Ian Paulson, ACS product manager, will be with us shortly. Uh, and he asked me a couple minutes ago to lead this and left me woefully unprepared. So apologies that I don't have a nice scripted intro that he would normally have. Uh, but we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the security changes that we shipped in ACF 625 uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so if you've got questions, we can answer them. We've got Matt here from the development team and Ant as well, who's also one of our devs. We've got Damon from uh, WP Engine's DevRel and Mike, who looks after our documentation and general site content and things like that for us. So, yeah, anyone anyone want to dive straight into some questions? Sure, okay. Tracy, you can unmute and, and talk or yeah. whatever. Hey, um, hi, hello from, well, currently West Virginia. Well, this is not where I usually am. Um, so, yeah, so the security thing has just kind of bit in me. Now, when I build websites, I build a lot of custom themes for a lot of clients, and I escape everything. I never use the field, the subfield. I always use get the and run it through whatever filters, including WKSES posts. But occasionally I inherit sites that other people have built. And one issue that I ran into is somebody was using a WYSIWYG field, used the field to display it. But when I tried to put in a Gravity Forms short code, it kind of blew up. Can I share my screen really quick? Uh, I actually don't know. Do you want to try? Let's see if it pops up and lets us. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Wow. Awesome. So here we go. This is this is the site. I did not build it originally, but it okay. is on me to maintain it. So this is the old code with the field. And of course, that little warning started popping up, and I'm getting tons of emails from clients saying, "What is this? Is my site not secure?" Yeah. So there's been a lot of overhead on that, but. This happens. So this is what it's like when it's unfiltered using the field with the gravity forms short code. This is the same exact field using WKS, yes, post and get field. And how do I deal with short codes, especially gravity forms? Because you've got two enormously popular plugins that seem to be butting heads here. Cool. So the, the good news is this is incredibly easy and you don't need to do anything. You can leave it as the field. With the way we escape the WYSIWYG is slightly different. So we escape it before we let short codes pass. So if you leave it as the field, whilst you still get the warning, but you can turn that off with some of the filters. Um, I'll get someone to paste the, the link to the filter in chat. Uh, you can So you can turn the warning off. Just leave it as the field uh, and everything will just stay working. The, uh, the way you're doing it now, where you're running... Uh, cases post mm -hmm. uh, that will strip out the script tags, which is why you're why you're seeing that you know, raw data there, because normally that would be embedded in a script tag. Okay, so is there a way then on your end for you to kind of uh, fine tune that warning so that if it if it's running on a WYSIWYG field, it doesn't scare my clients? So we've got a hopefully got a release coming out next week that we're just putting the finishing touches now that will tone down that warning a little bit because we have, you know, we make it clear that it might not be a breaking change. We kind of had to balance it and we weren't sure how, you know, where to go and how hard to go on that warning because we didn't want to risk like agencies developing sites and it goes to clients and then, you know, only show the messages in ACF screens or only show them to admins or something like that because there's a chance they could miss it and it would end up breaking, right? So we had to try and balance making sure people knew about it but there's definitely cases like this where it's it's a little bit too aggressive uh and kind of scary <laughs> more scary than it needs to be so we're going to solve that in two ways uh, we're going to firstly make it so that the the link to learn how to fix doesn't just take you to that wall of text of our release posts that's meant for developers and it kind of introduces you a little bit more gently to it um, but we've also changed the warning to to make it clear that this this might be fine and you might not need to do anything. We're just telling you about it just in case. So hopefully that helps. Uh, but yeah, as I said, if 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 you want, you can turn off the the, the warnings. Yeah, yeah I and I just you. pasted that in in a, a link to that in the chat, and that should help at least dismiss the notices for those instances where folks are getting confused with it. 
I think what I need to do is put that filter into all into the must use plug and I put it in all the, my client sites because uh, yeah, I'm getting a little tired of saying the same thing to every email that comes in. So, We've actually got a, a plugin you can grab from GitHub that will enable the new behavior now and turn off the notice. So if you, if you, you know, obviously you'd want to do that on a case by case basis, but then you can see what will actually break. So if you don't oh, think, great. yeah, so I'll, uh, and if you could paste the, the link to that as well. Cheers. Sweet. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. No worries. I have a uh, question. Sure. So I, um, I use, I, I also um, manage all the websites that I've developed. So nobody's complaining to me, which is good. They it, completely ignore it. It's Robin's problem. But um, I don't understand why I'm getting a warning on a couple of sites and not on all of them. And I look at them and I can't understand why certain fields are being called out when they're all identical. You know, I use it the same way on all the sites. You know, I, I kind of build a form and have people plug things in and then I can design the page. So I, I'm very confused about what I'm supposed to do consistently. And again, I have like 20 sites. And so this is really freaking me out. I don't want yeah. them all to break. Yeah, no, that's fair. Do you know what kind of what kind of content are you putting in your fields? Are you embedding iframes and or scripts or your know, HubSpot forms or something like that, or is it mostly just text and? Well, let's just say links just text. I mean, sometimes you know, I I might have uh, true false or something like that. That, but it's text. You know, it's it's they're all okay. pretty simple. Cool. Then the, again, the good news there is you can almost certainly just ignore the warnings. That one of the reasons that we have, <laughs> one of the reasons that the warning shows is because it's showing you things like uh, an ampersand symbol or a quote or something like that will, will become encoded to what it's supposed to be for output to the, the HTML without it being read as HTML. So mm -hmm. it's essentially just a, a warning to say something's changed. Now we, we needed to show that because if you were outputting that in, directly into like a JavaScript or, or potentially an attribute or something like that, then that oh, could simple. be a breaking change for you. Okay. So that's why we have to show it. But uh, yeah, again, we'll- uh, So the we'll... simple use of just text, not to worry. Yeah, I guess absolutely. I just don't understand why it showed up on like three of my sites and not on the others, you know, like it's not consistent. So, uh, yeah. you know, it was hard for me to pinpoint what's going on here. You know, just saying, but okay. Yeah, no, that, that, that's relieved. fair. Okay, yeah, I'm absolutely. Relieved. And it's almost certainly just the field values on those contain like an ampersand and and now it's okay. going to be encoded again right, the the the, uh, the plugin and put in chat is a, is a good way to go feel free to install that on a couple of sites just make sure nothing breaks if it does you and can very quickly turn it off and, and obviously you know figure out how to fix it but yeah drop us a line if you if you do need any more help but and there it, is another you're... plugin if if you really want to check and dive into like those values that are getting saved i just pasted a i'm gonna paste a link in here um, but this plugin, what it'll do is it'll store to your error logs more detailed errors of the previous and new value of those fields. So if you really want to dive into like what that text is changing, it'll it'll clearly tell you that. Uh, and to answer Amy's question in chat, that's specifically about the where the tiny MCE, the WYSIWYG that that WordPress ships with that we use for the WYSIWYG field. Uh, if you put uh, styles in, so you know you've centered the text or you've changed the color or something like that, like that. The way TinyMC builds that is it always puts a trailing colon, a semicolon on the end of your your style attribute. That's fine, but WordPress decides to remove that when WordPress does the escaping of it. So we detect that as a change. It's a it's a really annoying thing because it's obviously it's not going to break anything. It's it's tiny, but trying to write the code to detect that and and put that in, it you know it it would have been so unperformant to try and and detect that kind of thing. So we kind of just have to except that some of these some of these things are, are, are not going to break the site and hopefully in turning turning down the warning and in, in our, our release next week along with a, a new landing page for the error should help with that okay so question sure uh, so yeah so i was finding that because i used the plugin to output everything in the error log so that's why i was seeing a lot of that this was also a site i inherited um so that's what i found so that's why i was like okay this seems to be fine yeah. so then from there um so basically, I just kind of want to ask if my process is okay to make sure I'm good. Because, yeah, I'm in that same boat of Tracy. I didn't build these sites. They're all inherited. So don't really all know what's in there. Um, so basically, what I was finding after running in, running that plugin, I was seeing a lot of what I was running into was inline styles and just, you know, uh, the semicolons getting removed, all stuff that didn't matter. Um, yeah. So what I ended up doing was I just 
I already had the production database pulled down. So then I just searched the database for style tags for the start of a style tag, the start of a script tag, or the start of an iframe tag. Went through all my posts that displayed, verified was it working, not working. If it was CSS or JavaScript, I'm able to move it into my theme file as needed. Eventually, I'm just going to use Gutenberg for everything, but I'll get there. Um, from there, after I move all the custom CSS or JavaScript into my theme, I'm going to push the changes. Then I'm going to go into my production site, remove all those style and script tags that I've already re put into the theme. Um, then I'm done. That should be it. Is that yeah, sounds good. That it? All right, awesome. Yeah. And then clear Always. the notice on production. If it comes back, then there's still a case of it, but if yeah. not. Well, but I would think it wouldn't be a case though, because at that point, I still need to leave that state, that inline styles in because I just can't, that's too much work for me to remove those. And yeah, that's fair. upon testing, I'm seeing that even if I remove the spaces and the ampersand, I'm sorry, in the semicolon, once I resave, they get added back in anyway. So those notices still keep coming up. So that's where I went into like, all right, if I just search the database, I feel good about it. Yeah. So that's still coming up. So I'll probably just take the notice. I'll probably just um, enable the behavior now and then I'll call it done. But yeah, so that's a great gut check. Feels good. No, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think I've kind of softened towards pushing people towards the plugin now and more because it's definitely, in the most cases, it's not an issue. And, you know, obviously we don't want to ever tell somebody to, well, just turn this on on the production site because obviously you need to test it. But in a, in a, so many cases, you are you just good to turn the plugin on, do a quick check of the site, and then yeah. You know, turn yeah, it on. I found it easy to just enable it. I actually had everything turned on viewed my top view, our business driver pages essentially. I found out what broke, and then kind of started my way back that that way. So I did actually it probably took me to do the whole site. Not too long. It was not a huge site, but yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, the plugin was helpful. So thanks. No worries. Thank you. Uh, we have Ian with us now. Hello, Ian. How are you? Good, thank you. I'm just scrambling to find a mute button. <laughs> That's okay. Seems like a good session so far. Uh, hopefully helpful. Any other questions? How's everyone else getting on with it? Uh, feel free to use the FAQ section of, uh, of Zoom or just type in chat. Or just raise your hand and unmute if you've got questions. I forgot all that bit at the start, Ian. Ter terrible introduction for me. We are recording. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, we see, see Rachel. Yeah, says, I, I oh. just realized what I had to do to get my... Ah, there you are. <laughs> um, so I'm pretty new to this site. I basically inherited it like some of the other folks. And I'm not super familiar with advanced custom fields. So one of the errors that is coming up for me is saying that using the subfield isn't going to work well. Um, and then further down in that article that you shared, it talks about using echo git field. And so should I be using echo git subfield to um, show those ones properly? So you can do that. Uh, but again, if if you're not if you know if you basically it's worth going to check what kind of content is being output on the on the you know the page and the field type that was reported. Yeah, I do know we do have a lot of iframes and okay. scripts and stuff like that with like uh, YouTube embeds and stuff. So okay, if they're if they're like if they're in a WYSIWYG field and it's the YouTube URL and we let our embed take care of putting the YouTube video in, then that would carry on working. But it does sound like you're going to need to do a little bit of a closer look to just to make sure that you know it isn't literally an iframe tag saved to a text area or a wizzy I'm, I'm almost positive a majority of the things are uh, iframe uh, okay. and it's just dropped into the text field. So yeah, so in that case, the best way forward is to change to echo get subfield, okay. um, and that will basically turn off the escaping for the field. Obviously, there's a little bit of risk there because you mm -hmm. are essentially saying whatever anybody puts in this field i'm going to output to the front end of the site but you know so long as your users are locked down with secure passwords and things like that you should be okay okay awesome thank you and there's a question here from troy are you saying that if the fields are only text fields the update will work properly um yeah but if if these text fields contain script tags though that's what's going to be 
rendered literally as you see them in the in the front end like we were seeing on that site earlier with the the gravity forms how you see all that code in there that's really the only change it's not like uh when this change flips over that your site will crash it'll just the text will render whatever is saved in that content instead of outputting what you would expect with like an iframe or something like that Yeah, and I think we probably need to do a better job of that in the notes as well, just to warn you that, you know, if you do update and worst case, it turns on and something breaks, the worst case is the iframe isn't going to load, so the YouTube video won't be there. Or as you saw in the in the screen share earlier, there'll be some code on the screen that doesn't make sense because it's not wrapped in a, in a script tag. So there's, there'll be, you know, you'll very quickly know about it, but it's not going to completely destroy the website or you know, take it down or anything like that. Right. Anybody else? If uh, if anyone's been affected by the revisions issue in WordPress six point four, we're happy to say that that should be fixed in our next release as well next week. But uh, I know there's been a few people that have been waiting for that one. So, do we have a date for that? Uh, hopefully early next week, but we're still in final testing. So yeah, it could get pushed back depending on, on how we go. You had mentioned that the six two, the two, six, two update is going to be coming soon. Um, and there's yeah. recent changes to the notifications. What are those? Just curious. Uh, purely just, just wording. Uh, so okay. it will tell you, this may not be a breaking change. Uh, I think the learn how to fix this is learn more now because you yeah, know, you might not need to fix it. So we didn't want to make it like, <laughs> you need to go click this and read it. So we want people to do that, but yeah, trying to trying to tone it down a little bit. Um, and yeah, a whole bunch of other bug fixes and things in like that. So it's it's basically everything that kind of got held up by us doing that security release. So. We have another question in chat of what is the backup? There's no rollback for the plugin, correct? So you can uh, so obviously you can log into your ACF account and then download the old versions of ACF. Uh, you can. Kind of do an emergency break of of allowing HTML. So there's a filter for that. I think we uh, we do document that in the the release post as well. So you know there are many ways to immediately revert the old behavior, whether that's getting the plugin or. Can I just make a suggestion along those lines? It may be a little heavy a lift in a short period of time, but I use Composer to manage everything, and you guys have made it very easy to use Composer with ACF. So if you do that, you can always lock a version or go back a version and then, you know, go back to the point where it wasn't breaking things and then give yourself some time to, to make the fixes that you need to make. Yeah, and Matt just posted a link in chat on, on how to conditionally disable the new behavior. So if, if in that future state you want to use the new version, you can do that. I never trust all the users on a site. See, and and that's the problem we've been trying we've been trying to get across, right? Because you get a few people that are quite you know angry about it. They've got a hundred sites or anything like that, and like, why are you not giving me the option to opt into this behavior rather than opt out? And it's like, you know, we we have to do the thing that's secure for folks. And you know, I, we've had lots of people here say they've inherited sites and they didn't know that the, these sites were technically insecure by default, right? So it's a uh, it's kind of that game of we have to try and keep everybody as secure as we can do, even if there's a little bit of pain in the process of, of getting there. Oh, it looks like uh, there's some issues with running the function. So 
Um, yeah, so, so Mon Monique's question there is, uh, I tried to save all the, the function because I'm the only uh, admin editor on the site. Uh, see if there's an error. Okay, right. So yeah, the example we give is is kind of the uh, the full code, I think. Uh, I think if you if some if someone posted in chat earlier, a kind of a, an even nicer shorthand way of doing that that should help. Uh, scroll back up and find it. Yeah, it was Ant. Okay, uh, do you want to repaste that Ant and just do the return tree version? The for is that the same filter? Oh yeah, 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 yeah essentially. So the there's the ACF shortcode allowance of HTML and then the ACF the field allowance of HTML. Uh, the field works for both the field and the subfield because they are essentially the same same function. Because uh, the one I posted was for the notices to disable. Ah, uh, okay, yes, yeah, sure. Sorry. So I'm going to change this to. It is uh again though worth saying you know we would still advise against doing that yeah essentially saying any acf field can contain yeah any html purely because we don't know you know what vulnerabilities will be in other plugins in the future or even wordpress or or anything along the way that could end up post meta getting updated with malformed or malicious data so we have to kind of be cautious about recommending just turn it off globally And you would just add that uh, the question is, where do I have to post this code? This would go in, um, I, I would personally just make a, 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 like a simple PHP file plugin on, in your, in your site. Um, or if you don't have that, uh, uh, the ability to do that, you can go inside of your themes functions.php, but I would recommend being careful about doing that just because a theme update could probably wipe out that change. So it's best to probably do it on your own custom plugin. Um, but yeah, worst case, you can put it in the functions file. Yeah, especially if it's like a custom a... theme you've built. Sorry, go, go ahead. So may I do a quick screenshot just to show one field that I've got coming up? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, coming up here. Obviously, just be aware that it is recorded. So I think this will appear on YouTube, right, right Ian? Screen shares? Yeah, okay. All right. So the screen's on. Cool. I've tried to cut out some uh, any proprietary things here. Perfect. Um, so I've got one field here. It's basically saying property Dropbox link, Dropbox link via Redder via short code. And so it looks like field type is text. That's the right link or that's the right field rather. Yep. So am I to understand that from previous comments that this one should be okay regardless or yeah unless there's unless this is kind of a new something. issue for me yeah yeah unless it's doing something really weird but if it's literally if you go to the page that contains a dropbox link you know and you see that it is yep. purely just the url to a dropbox uh it will be the encoding of the url that's changing so not an issue if you if it's just being output somewhere or put into an attribute uh we're actually taking care of urls slightly differently to make sure they're encoded properly so that they will carry on working in the browser so yeah and i just pulled up a dropbox your uh cut link just to see what they look like and yeah i think they used every character possible in those <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's just when it when things like you know appersands of of parameters or you know if there's any weird forward slashes or anything like that they could get encoded to the the html format that the browser will read and, and still render properly when clicked so okay thank you so much i think my High pressure just my blood pressure just went down. <laughs> <laughs> no, and again, I was really boosted with some coffee. Oh, good. I hope it's not microwaved. We have we have someone on the team that likes to uh, likes to microwave their coffee, and uh, it's very offensive to me. It's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, Warm. if you wanna if you wanna test it, grab the grab the plugin um, that will enable the new behavior now. Uh, drop that into your, to your WordPress site and and see uh, see if the links still work. And if they do, you're all good. Uh, the message will all be turned off and you can just leave the plugin on uh, and enabled throughout the next few releases we do that enables this behavior and you'll know that you're already already active. So what do you say? Thank you. No worries.
Okay, anyone else got anything else? Oh, we got a question. Uh, so Monique, no, if you use uh, the field filter that Anthony provided there, uh, that will also apply to the subfield. It's the same filter for both. If, you, if anyone goes away and, and still has issues, just drop us uh, an email. Uh, Ask.com slash support, I think is, is the way, easiest way to get to the support form and we can uh, dive, dive into specific fields and outputs and things like that. Can you just reiterate when when we should be checking for errors like that we didn't know about in all of our 20 sites? So when is the when is the change actually going to happen? Okay, yeah. So the change is coming in in ACF six two seven, which we're scheduling for the the last week of February, so very late Feb. Um, we'll let you know if that date changes. Obviously, we'll be quite vocal about it, and it's un unlike us to talk about release dates this far out. But I think we're we're fairly confident of, of hitting that date. We it's a kind of balance because now that we've talked about it and it's very public. We don't want to risk that kind of becoming a vector, right? Because in theory, if you've got malicious users on their site, they could suddenly know, hey, I, there's a way I can do terrible things here. So <laughs> it's kind of finding that balance of probably not a huge risk, but also wanting to patch it fairly quickly. So we thought about six weeks was a, a good amount of time to to kind of let folks get up to speed. Obviously, for the for the short code fixes, we had to apply them immediately because if you had like a, a contributor on the site, they could uh, exploit that much easier. Whereas this this requires there to be code in your theme for the field. So. All right. Anyone got anything else? Any other questions about ACF as well? Feel free. You know, we don't have to limit it to just the, the, the security release. This is actually my first uh, chat Friday. Is is this something that's done like every week sort of thing or every uh, so two? So every, yeah, every two weeks uh, we get all the dev team together. Some other some other folks from around the VP engine to come and chat. Ian, Ian's the man to yell at if you've got feature requests or, or anything like that. Okay. Awesome. Uh, that's this, isn't, I think... this isn't special to the um... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Joe. Oh, no, no, that's uh, all right. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just, I, I didn't realize this. Yeah, this is great. Uh, I'll, I will be seeing you again. Yeah, that's also, great. if you ever got, if got questions about anything ACF, we're happy to help. Yeah, I, I love yeah. the product, by the way. I mean, I, 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 as I said, I use it on all my sites. been using it for years and years and years and years. I mean, I, I love Yay. it. I think that, I think all of us on the dev team are the same way, right? When Back when it was Elliot. We all were using it. So we've all, all come to it from being users. You know, I used to work at an agency, so I fully understand what it's like inheriting websites and, and all that kind of stuff. So we've tried to try to be extra careful and, and think about every possible situation when it comes to the security release, for sure. And these Chat Friday sessions are, like this is a special one. We did it two weeks ago as well to, to coincide with the 65 release. Um, but normally we, we either have open Q and A just for people's any problems that have come up or anything that people need help with. We sometimes have special guests. We talk about a special subject. We've like previously had other people from other plugins on like WPML, if you're translating sites and how that works with ACF. Um, but yeah, we, we thought this was a really good use case for the, the, these sort of sessions just to like hear the, the issues you've got and, and hopefully resolve them and yeah, lower blood, blood pressure in general. I think that's been useful. And if you've got any any suggestions for kind of focus points that we could talk about and do sessions on, let us know. Yeah, we've got uh, we did, we've done a couple on things like GraphQL where people use ACF in in a headless environment. Uh, yeah, always looking for it. There's uh, some stuff on blocks and in the future and, and that kind of stuff. So. And I don't think we've ever, I've ever specifically said it, but basically at the end of these sessions, I'll go and create a new Zoom link 
and put it on the website. So that link I've just put on the, the advancedcustomfields.com ACF Chat Fridays, there's a register link there and it will always, should be always up to date with the next session. So like, you can come off the back of the session and, and register for the next one, unless you beat me to it, but we try and be quick. Uh, Monique, uh, we have a plugin that you can uh, install uh, that will uh, enable the new behavior now. There we go. I knew Amazon it. I wasn't going to ask him that time. Uh, you can grab that from GitHub, drop it into your site, and uh, it will enable the new behavior. If you see anything go wrong, obviously, you go back into plugins on the plugins list page and, and disable it. Uh, but it kind of gives you that, that quick and easy way to, to turn it on and see what will happen. All right. Any final questions? These sessions normally last 45 minutes, but you know, we, we play it by ear. Often they're done early. Sometimes we run over a little bit and carry it on, but it's uh, based on based on uh, what folks have to talk about. Sure, go for it. It's Robin. Very good. Thank you very much, everybody. Cool. All right. Anything else from you, Ian, before we uh, wrap up? No, that's been good. Thanks, everyone. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah. Link in, uh, link in chat. Uh, if you want to register for the next session and, uh, we'll be back in two weeks, drop us a support message or tweet or any, any other way of getting in touch with us and, uh, we'll, uh, reach out and help. Cool. Thank Everyone. you. Take care. Thanks so Very much. Helpful. Have a good day.